And then on top of that, the upkeep and the maintenance of owning a dog that has that skill set. It's a big liability. Yeah. And it's a ton of maintenance. It's like having a loaded gun with you. So you have to learn how to that has a brain of its own. Yeah. At least a load of gun you can put in a drawer somewhere and it's not just going to like go kill someone Mm -hmm. on its own accord. Like you have a a loaded gun with a brain that you have to keep on top of. Oh, welcome back, guys. We just got the thumbs up. We're here. We're ready. Kind of. (laughs) We're ready. (laughs) We're ready to go. Welcome back to another episode of this podcast. <laughs> this one. Me. This Help podcast. Me. Um, what should we talk about today? Well, in the honor of spooky Halloween mm. um, spooky. tricks spooky and treats. You know, we saw this thing online that was like, it's a haunted house, but and the <laughs> sentence would be like, <laughs> um, they adopted out a 87 pound pit bull to a 90 year old lady, <laughs> something like that. So we thought we'd discuss a couple and just go off from there. Cause they're, they're funny. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. There are some funny ones. I got to look back cause we were just firing them off in our text group. <laughs> Working in this industry, like you just hear things and you're like, so like you, Diso- dissociate now yes or you just experience them mm-hmm. and you're like this can't even be real life um let's see what are some ones we got uh shout out to kayla our facility manager because she contributed to some as well and she said uh it's a rescue dog that the owners fully believe it just needs a little love to fix its problems mm-hmm. <laughs> Just needs a little love. He's been misunderstood. He's had a checkered past, a hard life, and If all trauma. it took to fix a dog was love, there'd be no mm-hmm. bad dogs. Yeah. Hashtag no bad dog army. I don't think... and Yeah, right? And to expand on this a little bit, if you are a person who thinks that like... And I don't know, I guess this does fall in line with the unfortunate culture shift as of late. But like, if you're someone who thinks that it... A, a bad dog is a dog who just hasn't been loved enough mm-hmm. or like isn't being well taken care of. You really think there's that many terrible people in the world? Mm-hmm. That there's that many bad people? Yeah. Yeah. And that like love is all a dog needs when love is like the furthest thing that a dog needs. Like they don't, affection They don't and care love. about no. that. <laughs> Dogs and- don't have like love for each other. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's going to trigger some people, yeah, yeah. but like even dogs don't love. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, do my dogs technically love me? Like, do they feel the emotion love? Yeah. Or am I providing valuable resources to me so they, they get excited when they see me because I provide their food, yeah. walk them, snuggle them, and I give them things that they like. Would they love me if I didn't? Exactly. I th- And I think that there's like a... I think there's like a biological drive within dogs of that like pack mentality and that Mm -hmm. desire. But I think in a lot of cases, because like you see it a lot with dogs, even that are, you know, in an abusive situation that like still get excited to see Mm -hmm. those people when they come home or when they, you know what I mean? Which is like very sad to think about, but Mm -hmm. it's also the dog doesn't know any different. Mm -hmm. That's just what's familiar to them is those people. So it's like if a dog can can still show signs of like excitement or joy or like happiness when they see someone who treats them terribly Mm -hmm. like they I can't look at the way my dogs like feel about me and be like well they obviously love me or else they wouldn't be doing x y and z it's Like, like that doesn't make any sense yeah, you know, one of our most controversial reels from a couple months ago was like, what was it like? It's still getting. Is it the one that I when yeah, I was talking that, like, about? Value you should value humans' life more yeah. than a dog's. And people were like, my dog saved me from X Y Z situation, and I'm indebted to them for the rest of my life, and they protected me. It's no, like, no, your dog felt physically threatened, so they protected themselves. And you just happened to benefit from mm-hmm. it. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, and you made up a story really... about how they protected you. And... Yes. Yes. Dogs will not protect you. Like either you have a dog that is just naturally aggressive mm-hmm. and civil and that's what drives them to be protective is more so a drive to be dominant and overpowering mm-hmm. in a situation which there are some dogs naturally like that they are very few and far between though mm-hmm. but typically most of your dogs are not going to go out of their way to protect you mm-hmm. unless they are purposefully trained to be able to protect which is like tens of thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. okay to be able to do that and then on top of that the upkeep and the maintenance of owning a dog that has that skill set it's a big liability yeah and it's a ton of maintenance it's like having a loaded gun with you so you have to learn how to that has a brain of its own yeah At least a load of gun you can put in a drawer somewhere and it's not just going to like go kill someone Mm -hmm. on its own accord. Like you have a a loaded gun with a brain that you have to keep on top of. I think one of our other haunted house things, let me find it, was like Kayla said something. My fear aggressive dog that the owners want to train to be a guard dog that only acts like that for intruders. (laughs) Yeah, that's That's such a good one. Such a haunted house. (laughs) Because to think that you can just have your dog discriminate between what is a real threat versus like only mm-hmm. what you care about. Like they read your mind and they're like, mom feels threatened. Yes. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Especially your average dog you just like popped off the street mm-hmm. or they're not going to have the discernment to be the guard dog you want. And even then, like say you get an extreme like one of the best guard dog breeds of all time, Connie Corso. Say you go get one of those and it's extremely Mm well-bred. It's very well-trained. Like American Standard Canine, that guy. Mm -hmm. I forget his first name. He has a ton of Corsos. That's like his breed, right? Mm -hmm. His thing. He even talks about when he speaks about these dogs, he's like, there are times where when I've gotten home late or I come into my yard or, you know, whatever. And the dogs are not expecting him or don't know. He's like, I know that my own dogs would attack me if I didn't announce myself and Mm -hmm. make it very clear, like who I was. And have that structure lined up where they're crated when he's not home and he has control over them. Exactly. Because the, the dogs don't like, and I actually was just having a conversation uh, with a client about, this kind of situation just yesterday on the phone and he actually watches the podcast (laughs) so you're probably gonna hear us talking about it but he was talking about how he is a doberman and he was like she started uh regressing a little bit where she's barking more in the house now Mm -hmm. and like she's like he's like just the other day i took her on a walk and as soon as we went out the door she about yanked me down because she started barking at like a stranger that was at the end of the street. And he's like, you know, she's being a Doberman. And, you know, I know that they're just like very like protective dogs. And I said, how protective is it though? If she like injures you from mm-hmm. yanking you onto the concrete? Yeah. Like look at it that she way first. Of you. <laughs> yeah. <She's>... Right. <laughs> if she was trying to protect trying to you, you, she would not be doing that. Yes. And then, the other aspect of it is that he also desires and wants a dog that is extremely social, Mm -hmm. that he can walk around and all of his neighbors can pet, that the neighborhood kids can engage with and all this stuff. And the dog has the temperament to be able to do Mm -hmm. that. Okay. If you know, he creates the structure that's necessary. Um, but I told him, I was like, you can't have both. Mm -hmm. You can't dabble in defensiveness Mm -hmm when you sometimes think it's okay, but then also expect her to be super stable Mm -hmm. and confident and easygoing and not suspicious at all in every other context. Like very mixed messages. Like Lumos, for example, like you, he's not necessarily a protection dog, but you treat him as like, he's not a social dog that the kids in the neighborhood can come play with. And no, I don't like he, He's a complicated one because, yes, like I, his temperament couldn't go one way or the Mm -hmm. other, though. 
like his temperament is his temperament he is who he is he could not be a social dog Mm -mm. and so i just don't even press the issue and so i've just accepted that like he is a a guard dog now Mm -hmm. (laughs) essentially i like i have no doubt that if he was loose in my house and somebody walked in Mm -hmm. and i wasn't present to give him commands or do things with him like it would not be a pretty sight for them um but and so that's why when i have people over to my house that he doesn't know he just goes in a kennel Mm -hmm. or he has to be on a bed stay the whole Mm -hmm. entire time um but most of the time i just put him away Mm -hmm. because i just don't responsible yeah i don't have there's not a desire for me or a desire of him to want to be involved Mm -hmm. and out in those situations because there's no long-term goal of me changing that about him. Yeah. And you don't want to. No, I don't want to. I'm okay with leaning into the suspicious. Mm-hmm. I don't like people coming into my house. Mm-hmm. Like I like that about a dog. Yeah. <laughs> and so I then assume the risks of having a dog like that. And then I just manage mm-hmm. him properly. But most of the people we have, we don't get clients that are like, I want a mean dog. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen. And most people don't. They like the idea. But when you explain what the lifestyle actually Mm -hmm. looks like of like, sure, you want a mean dog. But then when you go out in public, you constantly have to have your head on a swivel, Mm -hmm. like swivel, making sure that nobody's approaching, that you're being super um, aware of your surroundings. You can't have them out when people come over. You can't, you know, X, Y, and Z. Suddenly your revolving door in your house of like neighborhood kids running in and Mm. out with their friends. Like you don't actually want a mean dog No, (laughs) when you really explain it to people. And a lot of people will hear like, you shouldn't let your dog bark out the window or people are like, I want my dog to bark out the window because I want people to know I have a dog so that I don't break in my house. I'm like, fair. Um, but if you're going to have a dog that's protective, you need to learn how to control those behaviors where in society you can take them out safely and you can mm-hmm. manage that behavior properly. Yeah. Like Lumos, like think sometimes with male dog trainers, especially they can kind of miss the point that being a female in this world is really scary. Yes. And I somewhat like, I don't have any of dogs that would defend me, but <laughs> I could definitely see, like, I'd feel very safe with Lumos. Yeah. Um, I fostered a pot cake for a little bit. And mm-hmm. when I was walking, I'd walk at midnight and I felt very, very safe with that dog because yeah. he was intimidating. And I liked the way that I felt with that. But I also mm-hmm. knew I can manage his behavior and advocate that nobody came over and pet him or did anything to him. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, and that is the benefit. And like, I've had other female clients that similarly, they're like, yeah, my dog barks out the window of my car when like homeless man asking mm-hmm. for money comes to my car and like, I don't want to fix that. Yeah, I'm not and I'm like, that. that's fine. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you don't, f- I, I don't care if you don't want to fix certain things, but then my job is to tell you, but here are the risks that come along yeah, with that. How that could affect. Yes. Like, like the risk of like, I don't correct Lumos if he barks in my car when mm-hmm. people approach or things like that. But conversely, I know the risk is if I'm not paying attention and someone were to stick their hand in there when he's not mm-hmm. contained or whatever, they're probably going to get bit. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have to go into that knowing that if I'm going to allow my dog to behave in a certain way, then I also have to assume the responsibility for keeping everybody else safe. Mm -hmm. That isn't actually a threat and keeping him safe in in turn as well. I think a couple of weeks ago you had a lesson and you were like, I can't leave him in the car because it's hot. So you took him to Crocker Park and you muzzled Mm -hmm. him. Yeah. And like that scenario, like, yes, you know that 99.9% of the time he'd be fine, but at Crocker Park, the environment is too unpredictable. Yeah. It's like, I, I feel very comfortable with him and that like, I can, I can do pretty much anything with him in most places. Um, the only time that I still muzzle him is when there's a chance of children running Mm. amok that are going to be in very close quarters because like children, if he, if they do something stupid and at this point, really the only thing that would set him off is if they came up and they like, grabbed him or like Mm. tried to hug him or do something but that could happen yeah and i don't want to run that risk yeah um he's he's very tolerant at this point of most things like i (laughs) i think i don't know if i told the story on here but the other 
um, this was a, maybe a few months ago, we were getting ready to go on a walk with the dogs and I had Lumos out in the yard. Our neighbor has like some young kids and they've grown up. Uh, I mean, in the time that I've lived there from like young to a little bit older now, they've been around the dogs and stuff like that. And, um, they've coexisted with Lumos. Like they know they're not really allowed to touch mm -hmm. him and I just, you know, keep him out of the way. But I like was putting like bending down to put something on Snoop and I look up <laughs> and Lumos is standing next to me. And one of the little girls is just like holding mm. his snout. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she God. had walked, she had walked all the way into her yard yeah. when I wasn't looking. So I think I was like putting a harness on Snoop and she's just like cupping his snout, like in her hands and they're just looking at each other. <laughs> And I was like, oh, no, no, thank you. Don't do that. And Lumos is just sitting there, just looking yeah. so like, he's like, ah, fine, little mm -hmm. child. I guess I have to tolerate yes. this. Yeah. But like, those are, that's the level of control mm -hmm. you have to be able to get to with a dog like that is like, they have to be able to have a high enough threshold mm -hmm. that even if something silly happens, that they give you enough time mm -hmm. to be able to step in yeah. and figure that, that and thing out for them. Very difficult to manage for the average person. Yes. Like a couple years ago, I was walking in the park near the facility and this man on drugs, it comes over to me and he's, I was with a chocolate lab. His name was Chip. Um, and Chip did not come to play. Chip did not fuck around. He was in our board and trained program for aggressive behaviors toward humans. And this man comes stumbling over and he's like, can I pet that dog? And I was like, no, 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 he bites. And I'm backing up. And the man is like, no, I'm very good with dogs. And he's <laughs> forward. And he's like reaching out to touch Chip. And Chip's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit. And he was like. In that scenario, I'm not going to correct Chip because he did me a solid. Like, were... <laughs> right. And yes, like we can't have dogs distinguish when it's like a friend coming over to you or a homeless man on drugs. Yes. Yeah, right. But in that moment, I'm not going to nail him for that. Yeah. So people get so concerned that like a board and train was like, well, what if a man comes up to me and I'm alone and I have this dog and I was like, then you can let your dog do what it wants to do. Mm. I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, don't overthink it. Yeah. Don't overthink it, guys. And also and, protect yourself. Yeah. And for the most part, like, if you just have a larger dog with you, most of the time people are going to leave you alone. Yes. Yeah. Just like the visual of it is yes. enough of a like deterrent. Walking through the park that we walk through, like when I have a big, strong German Shepherd or a Roddy, I'm like, try me. <laughs> nobody comes and talks to us yeah no it definitely is a quite the deterrent it's like scary dog privileges mm -hmm. but it's only you only get scary dog privileges if you have a scary dog that's under control if they are out of control it's just embarrassing honestly embarrassing for you let's see um oh which leads us into one of our other ones uh, it's a working line German Shepherd that a suburban family got to be a nice pet for the kids. <laughs> I've had that They happen. said, let's import this black German Shepherd from Czechoslovakia mm -hmm. <laughs> and from the Czech Republic. And this will be perfect. Mm -hmm. A perfect uh, little puppy for the children to learn how to take care of. Yes. Like I had a client a couple years ago that got a Malinois for their children. And it was not. A well-bred Malinois. Oh, my gosh. And he did not stay in that home because he was not a good fit for small children that have their friends over. Oh, yeah. No. That, like, the average person, like, you shouldn't mix that level of training that you need with those dogs with your everyday life when it's hectic, when your back is turned, when you have an unguarded moment. Yeah. So. And there's so much more to owning those high level breeds than just knowing how to train a dog. Yeah. Like you could be the best obedience trainer in the world, but like that doesn't mean you're qualified to mm -hmm. still own some of those dog breeds yeah. because there's so many different pieces to the puzzle that have nothing to do with obedience mm -hmm. at all. Unfortunately, it's like responsible dog ownership. And that can be really difficult if 
you just have so much going on in your life and mm-hmm. it's just not conducive to some dogs aren't conducive to a family lifestyle and that's okay yes yes um what are some other ones oh i said it says she but you knew that needs a nail trim <laughs> I don't think I need to expand on that I, much. There will be no further <laughs> comments. A Shiba Inu who needs a nail trim. That's like, I don't have... Oh, well, there's a new sticker I got. <laughs> he doesn't bite. I got a sticker, and they actually sent me two. So if you want one, you can have it, Bridget. It's, hilariously enough, it's a Rottweiler with an aggressive face, and the text says, don't forget the nail trim. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> always, always the Roddies. <laughs> um, uh, it's a pound mutt that's being owner trained as a service dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we could love that one this forever. <laughs> I that's just, my personal haunted house right there. Yes, I think <laughs> it takes a lot of audacity to think you can go to the Cleveland APL and pick out piss fingers who's <laughs> you can't look. Piss fingers in the eyes, blah, blah, blah. You can't do this. But he's going to be, go, He wants to, you want to take him on a plane. Uh-huh. You want to take him on vacation uh-huh. to Colorado. So you're making him a service dog. <laughs> he might threaten the plane. Stop training your own service dog. <laughs> it's not ethical. You're not good at it. No. <laughs> I'll just tell it. I'll just say it to your face. You're not good at it. Yeah. Stop doing it. Unless you specifically get a task trained dog that like is a seizure dog or smell. Yes. A, a diabetic alert dog. Like, okay. Yeah. I agree with that. But your anxiety mutt that like paws you when you're having a panic attack. <laughs> I saw a video. I don't remember if I sent it to you or not. It was infuriating. It was like one of these owner trained service dog accounts. They're they love social media. Mm. They love to post all about it. Because they like to be the victim. Yeah. They like to be the center of attention. That's why they take horribly trained dogs out into public and then Mm -hmm. yell at people for petting them. Um anyways, so she was like training her dog in Walmart. Okay. And she was taking it off leash. And like Mm. her caption was like the first, our first off leash training session in Walmart or something. First of all, I know that there are service dogs that have to be off leash to Mm. perform some of their tasks in an emergency. And I have never, I have yet to see a legitimate service dog that has to be off leash, not trained with an e-collar Yeah, for that. Okay. Because you have to have some way to enforce things. Mm -hmm. Like even even dogs that um, are like guide dogs, Mm -hmm. um, the people are told, even though those dogs can perform quite nicely off leash if they needed to, I'm sure, um, the, the handlers that need the dogs are even told like if you are like putting your dog into a down next to you, while you're eating or while you're working out at the gym or you're doing something, they're even told to anchor the dog Mm -hmm. because they're like, you won't be able to really see them if they get up and they break command Mm -hmm. or they go do something. So there still has to be like ways to hold these dogs accountable, right? A service dog is not infallible Mm -hmm. and you know, it'd be silly to think that. So there has to be ways to like hold these dogs accountable. All of that to say she takes this dog's leash off and she's using treats to like lure this thing around the aisle and somebody with a dog walks, which I don't know why either of them are in Walmart. Neither of them are qualified to Mm -hmm. be in Walmart. Okay. But this woman walks by with her, like a smaller dog. It's on a leash and she walks down the aisle where the girl is with her off leash Mm -hmm. shepherd. Okay. And she has the shepherd like in a sit in between her legs and she doesn't pay attention She's too busy filming. She doesn't pay attention that there's this woman coming up with this little dog. And the little dog was fine. I mean, it was just walking, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And it walks up past them and they go past them in the aisle. And as soon as the shepherd like notices that the little dog is there, just immediately goes down and tries to like engage with the dog. And she grabs the collar. And that's when I realized Mm -hmm. she only has a flat collar on this dog. Not even like a martingale. Nothing, just a 
thick one inch mm. <laughs> agitation collar almost that she's like ripping this dog now back shoving food in its face trying to recover and i'm like that was your only means mm. of control over that dog and you decided to take it off yeah. leash and then they get annoyed that people exist with well that was the thing she like put on there her whole point of putting the video was that she was like this woman was determined to distract my service dog. Mm. She saw that we were in the aisle and then she came down and just lingered in the aisle. Maybe she was, I don't know, shopping Mm because you're in fucking Walmart. Yeah, and to think like if your service dog can't handle situations like that, they shouldn't be serving you. No, if that's how your dog behaves when it sees another dog, why is it off leash? Yeah. I, like, that dog should have stayed sitting and looking at you the whole time that that dog went by it should not have yeah. even cared no that's a dog that was ready for off leash yeah that dog was not i was astounded i was like this is crazy the entitlement that people feel <laughs> yes there is even a website that you can go on and get a service dog registration for yourself and they'll send you you'll pay like two hundred dollars and they'll send you a little license and the license will have a picture of your dog and it will say service dog (laughs) and it's just absolute nonsense i think the people who do that are honestly even more ignorant than the people who pretend to service train dog like train the service dog on their own because like why are you paying money Mm-hmm. there's no one like monitoring any registrations anywhere no. paying any amount of money other than if you're actually purchasing mm-hmm. a dog from a credible company who's training it for you you shouldn't have to pay money to register your service dog yeah. that's not how it works um oh i put in there it's the owners of a pit mix that keep taking their dog to the dog park and being surprised that it attacks other dogs that's a good one <laughs> they're like, why? Why does he do that? <laughs> so we just kept trying. We, we kept maybe trying. We'll go back. If you think I'm being facetious, I have met people that, this is why dog parks are so scary. I have met people that it took their dog attacking a dog for the third time at a dog park for them to realize that they had a problem. Mm-hmm. They just kept going back. Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's it wasn't try again. his fault. That that lab was looking at him wrong. It's just <laughs> right. like there's so much wrong things that happen at a dog park. And if your dog is like already kind of socially on the fence yeah. with things and they're not that golden retriever that just loves their yeah, conflict run around, driven. Um, you shouldn't be taking them to the dog. And park. this is I'll I'll guarantee you this is what happens. In most of these fights where the pit bull ends up attacking the other dog and the owners are like it wasn't their fault they didn't start it i can tell you exactly what happened that pit bull probably went up to another dog very confrontational Mm -hmm. like posturing real stiff head over the shoulders just being a dick Mm -hmm. that dog corrects the pit bull and then that sets the pit bull off, and then mm. now they're in a they're in a dog fight. Mm-hmm. I hate to break it to you, the dog who started it wasn't in the wrong. Mm-hmm. They were being like, "Hey, get the fuck out of here!" Yeah, you're get being out rude. Of my face. Like, Leave me alone. And then because pit bulls are like, "Yes!" Yeah. Anytime a dog fight starts, yes. <laughs> they said, "Oh my god, this is the best day of my life." It's like a man with too much. Tr- testosterone at a bar fight that yeah. just jumps into it yeah. and you're like they they go to the bar hoping there's a fight mm-hmm. pits go to the dog park hoping and praying that there is a fight they're like that they can either start join in on yeah. and definitely finish mm-hmm. that's Tag their whole coach. go in life <laughs> let's see what else we got um, let's look Oh, it's a purse puppy that the owners refuse to crate train but get mad it keeps shitting in the house yes <laughs> you, there's a tiktok where the person had pee pads all laid out and there was like a little gap in the pee pads like where they didn't touch is that where the dog shit yeah <laughs> and they were like no no you don't poop there like that's iconic <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's really good. <laughs> yes. Or people that say like, oh, small dogs can't be house trained. Mm-hmm. That's so, not true. 
chihuahuas are ankle biters. Nope. None of it's true. Was that all of them? Oh, when she says six dogs is way too much, but she regularly brings in a seventh dog to foster. <laughs> yeah. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> hey. Oh, I'm man. like, sometimes in my life, I'm like, wow, I'm bored. <laughs> you know what would be toxic? Getting a foster dog. Oh, my gosh. Um, What other haunted houses are there? There's a lot in this industry. There are a lot. There's too many. Um, getting a dog from a backyard <laughs> breeder and thinking that they're going to be really well bred. Oh, I was. Yeah, I was going to say, <gasps> yes, actually, I just saw this was the video. You just triggered my memory. Um, a woman on the phone arguing with her breeder about the puppy had ingested like foreign objects before mm. she had even gotten the puppy. So then she's paying all of, like 14 hours into having the puppy. She had to take it to the ER and then all these surgeries and all this kind of stuff. And she's arguing with this person on the phone trying to say that they should pay for it and blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. You went to a backyard breeder with no contract. Mm -hmm. You're fucked. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say it to you, lady. Like, I, and in the caption, she's like, I went to an AKC breeder. I listen. AKC doesn't mean shit. No, it does not mean shit. Like they're just because a dog is reg. The only thing that is necessary to register a dog through the AKC is just proof that it's purebred. Mm -hmm. That's it. There are so many terrible purebred dogs mm -hmm. out there. Purebred does not mean that they are well-bred. No. And when you go again, I will never purchase a dog from someone that does not have a contract. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest red flag or health in testing, the world. Like yes. That they care about their dogs. Yes. Because, like, if you got a dog and it ingested all these things, when and well, why? And that's the thing is they found uh, plastic. They found leather. They found a collar. They found... And then, like, you can hear the guy on the phone. It's, like, some woman. And she's, like, I'm driving to my dad's house. I just got here. And then they're trying to say that, like, oh, before you even take the puppy to have the surgery, just bring it back and we'll refund you and all this stuff. They're just going to let the dog die. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do the surgery for it. Yeah. Um, and then... And he's like, well, I mean, those dogs are always running around in the backyard, chewing collars off of each other while they're playing. First of all, that's so dangerous mm -hmm. to have dogs playing with collars on yeah. when they're unsupervised because <laughs> they can choke each other. But then beyond that, these dogs are so just like left to their own devices mm -hmm. that they're ingesting random foreign objects at 12 weeks old. And they probably are, have worms, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I worked a job in my teenage years where my family owned a dog kennel and my job was to stay outside with the puppies all day long and watch the dogs the entire day and making sure that they didn't chew each other's collars off or get into things, picked up trash in the yard <laughs> and it worked. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's a huge red flag. Like I get why she was mad and frustrated, but like you have nothing to stand on. Yeah. You paid for the dog. You brought it home. You have no contract that obligates them to help you or do anything for you in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yikes. It is very scary. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Another haunted house for me is people telling me that they got their dog um, from somewhere where they weren't allowed to see the parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like, they just came out of a big barn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. Amish though. Yeah. I'll like have, have people come in with a puppy that's like, I'm like, oh, this dog is like genetically just not great. Like the temperament is just not good. Like super fearful, yeah. super nervous, whatever. And I'll, you know, I'll go through all my questions and I'll usually ask like, oh, like, did you get to meet the parents, you know, or whatever when you got the puppy? And they'll be like, no, like, 
we could like see her, but they like had her separated from the puppies and like we couldn't really, they didn't want us to go over there. And I'm like, and the more they talk themselves through it, I can like see the gears turning mm-hmm. in their head now that they're having the issues with their puppy. And they're like, that, that was a red flag, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> My yes. friend got a doodle and she was looking back at the photos. Like it's been five years since she's got the doodle and she looks back and there's just a little kid's Amish shoe in the background. <laughs> so his name is Ozzy. So we're calling him Ozadiah. <laughs> and she was like, I never knew he was from an Amish breeder until I saw that little Amish shoe in the background. Yep. Yep. And sometimes it takes yeah. a little bit more research. Yeah. They're like, Don't come into the barn. Don't, don't do it. There's, there's many, much better places to get your dogs. Or my haunted house is people that buy dogs from Petland or pet stores. Listen, if there's, if you're, feel bad if you're still them. buying dogs from pet stores, okay. If you get duped by a puppy mill or something like, you know, you go to a barn and then, you know, whatever, like, okay, we're still, it's still stupid, but we're working on it. But a pet store in you this day and land. age, yeah. you know better. Mm-hmm. You know better this day and age to no. go to a pet store. That's crazy. They're like, yeah, we got um, my Bernie's Mountain Dog from Petland. And, you know, I just felt so bad for him in that little tiny cage. Mm-hmm. Nope. Absolutely not. Um, tell us what your haunted houses are in the comments. I would really love to hear them. Yes. Sure, Let's you've got keep some it good going. ones. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Any last thoughts, Bridget? Nope. You know, enjoy your spooky season. Yeah, happy Halloween. Stay safe. Um, don't let your dogs just out with the trick-or-treaters if they shouldn't be there. <laughs> yes. Okay? <laughs> Put the Halloween candy up because... Yeah. Actually, so we'll, we'll be doing... Will we have one more podcast before Halloween? Yes. Yeah. Oh, on Halloween we'll have one. Okay. So um, tips and tricks. Yeah. We're probably too late at that oh, yeah. point. We should have thought of that. Sorry, mm-hmm. guys. We could have given you a whole top to bottom do's and don'ts of trick-or-treaters with your dog. Yeah. Put your dogs away for the trick-or-treaters. Put that Halloween candy up. Um, oh, David responded to... I asked David why he <laughs> LOL'd a hate comment about me on our Instagram and he said because I actually had no idea what they were saying and it looked like gibberish and I thought it was funny (laughs) thanks for having my back David thanks for having our backs David (laughs) (laughs) thanks oh man now that he knows that it was a hate comment he probably actually feels really bad Mm -hmm. I think (laughs) does he not know what tism I don't know I don't know Honestly, it was rude to everyone. It, it was, was rude to me. It was rude to autistic people. It was rude to everyone. Everyone should be offended by that. Um, anywho, uh, thanks for joining us today, guys. And we'll see you on Halloween. See you on Halloween. <laughs>